Hi everybody, Betty McIntyre here with your legislative update. So we've had a lot of uh, deadlines, a lot of action happening down at the legislature over the last past two weeks. We're going to talk to you about some of the things that have been happening and talk to you a little bit about some of the bills that we are seeing moving through the process. Last week was the last week Last week was the deadline for all bills to be heard in their original chamber. Um, and so there was about 1800 bills that were dropped this legislative session and only about 800 are continuing to move through its legislative journey. This week was crossover week and crossover week is when each chambers, the House and the Senate, work to get the bills that were heard in committee in their chamber through rules, through the cow calendar, which is the Committee of the Whole, have those bills up for debate, and then do a third read vote on the bills. So then if they pass a third read, then they are transmitted over to the opposite chamber. Crossover week was uh, can be pretty controversial. It can bring about a lot of fierce debates on the floor of either the House or the Senate, depending on what bills are moving through the system. But this, this crossover week was fairly mild. Um, we didn't see a lot of contention on a lot of bills. That doesn't mean that there weren't fierce debates on some bills, but not as many as we usually do see. But there are definitely long agendas, long hours, and the legislative uh, members, particularly in the House, had some extremely uh, long days and into the night debating bills and voting on bills. So now we're gonna start seeing um, bills move over to the opposite chambers where they'll go through the whole process again. Now, one of the things to know about uh, crossover week is it is the last week for appropriations committee. Um, to, they are the only committee that are allowed to meet past the deadline. And appropriations committee is often where you will see bills that have not moved through the process, see new life, and they will get a bill on an appropriations calendar that doesn't really have to do with any kind of funding, which is the purpose of appropriations. <clears throat> this uh, past week, we heard, uh, heard in the Senate Appropriations Committee, several, several bills in the Senate um, that are trying to continue uh, moving through the process. One of those bills um, was Senate Bill 1485. Senate Bill 1485 originally was a pretty benign bill that had to do with tabulation equipment as uh, it relates to the elections, but that bill did, wasn't moving through. <clears throat> so what we saw with Senate Bill 1485 was is it became a zombie bill. Um, a week ago, Senate Bill 1069 which is a bill that we've been posting on our legislative weekly updates that would have, would eliminate the permanent early voting list. It would also require voters to vote in federal elections for four consecutive um, federal races. So you would have to have voted in a primary and a general in four consecutive races. That bill died on the Senate floor last week. Um, and 
a lot of, uh, to a shock of many people. Um, the Senate is 16 to 14, um, 16 Republicans, 14 Democrats. So it only requires one Republican to switch to a no vote to kill a bill <clears throat> or vote yes to make a bill go through. And so that's what we saw in 1069 is that last week that bill died <clears throat> because one re Republican member voted no. So that bill stopped. The reason why I'm bringing this up is because in appropriations, 1069, the language that was included in 1069 found itself on Senate Bill 1485. And that's why we call it a zombie bill, is because it's a bill that just will not die. It keeps coming back, um, despite the fact that it keeps being killed in the legislative session. So the language that was included in Senate Bill 1069 came back to life and is now on Senate Bill 1485 as a strike everything bill. So the original Senate Bill 1485's language was struck in from it, the bill and the language from 1069 was uh, put in its place. So moving forward in the legislative process, Senate Bill 1485 will is in essence Senate Bill 1069. It just has a new bill number. So <clears throat> we're going to continue to monitor that bill um, because we were monitoring it when it was known as 1069. We still have concerns around what it does for the voters um, on the permanent early voting list. And we believe that individuals who can make their choice on whether or not they want to vote in election and they should not be penalized and removed from the permanent early voting list um, if they fail to, if they choose to not vote in a federal race um, in that the bill were, would require. So this is the, um, this gets to some of the other voter bills that we were tracking. Uh, through our legislative updates did not move through. So there's some successes in that. Um, but there are still a couple of other voter bills that are continuing to move through the process. Um, we anticipate them to go on third read calendars next week. Um, you can check those bills out in their overviews and our weekly legislative updates to you. Um, and, you know, this is to be said about all bills. Um, We'll continue to track the bills as they go through. Um, if we see a bill come back as a striker, we'll definitely let you know that as well and continue to keep you up to date on any actions that are happening as it relates to uh, voter engagement in our state. Now, on to some good news. Um, Senate Bill 1092, which is the commission's uh, bill, relating to adding deafblind and um, allowing the commission to provide legislative recommendations on language acquisition and literacy readiness for children who are deaf, hard of hearing, and deafblind. So that bill passed out of the Senate the end of January, and it's just been kind of sitting over in the House. Um, we anticipated that to happen. Uh, because crossover week is typically when we start to see uh, those bills start to move. And we did see that this week. Senate Bill 1092 was first read, uh, second read in the House and was officially assigned to the House um, Human Health and Human Services Committee. Uh, we are uh, hoping to be on a committee agenda in the next coming weeks and have the same uh, support that we saw in the Senate in the House. We'll keep you updated on the progress of that bill as well. 
Um, also, we are continuing to track and support uh, House Bill 2863, which is related to the Arizona School uh, for the Deaf and the Blind, I'm revising them. That bill uh, was heard in committee, House Education Committee a couple weeks ago. It moved very quickly through the House. It passed unanimously and it moved, uh, is now over in the Senate. This bill uh, did become a strike everything bill, but it's a strike everything in that it didn't replace a bill number or anything like that. It's just, they took a uh, new language and condensed it into the, from the original bill. What the bill, strike everything bill does is it ha makes a ASDB, um, a LEA, a local educational agency for the purposes of receiving uh, federal dollars. Uh, it also requires uh, ASDB to be accountable to the states and the, fed the federal accountability standards. It also provides ASDB with the opportunity um, excuse me, the directive to issue diplomas and any dispute resolution that uh, needs to occur. Uh, this is a fairly important bill uh, from ACDH's perspective that ASDB be identified as an LEA since they have the uh, administrative control uh, and support to provide the education related to the children that they serve. Um, this bill is critical in the fact that if they, ASDB is not identified as an LEA, they have the potential of losing several million dollars. Um, the, the funding source related to federal dollars is extremely important for the school to provide their site-based education to the students at both Phoenix um, uh, PSD and the Tucson campus. So ACDH board did take a formal position of supporting this bill and we will continue to support this as it moves through the legislature. Um, so some other things that happened this week, um, which we wanted to talk with you about is the House and the Senate both independently dropped a bill related to unemployment. Unemployment um, in the state is we are actually the second, uh, second to the last state in the lowest unemployment benefit rate uh, programs. Right now in Arizona, if you are on unemployment, you receive a, uh, an unemployment check in the amount of $240 for 20 up to 26 weeks until you can attain employment. And one of the things that the pandemic, uh, co the COVID pandemic highlighted was our unemployment is not enough to sustain a family as that family looks for work. Um, it's obviously much more expensive um, to live in this state than it was 17 years ago when the last time unemployment uh, rate was ever established. So to give you a little history is 17 years ago, uh, the unemployment rate was set at $240 a week. 17 years later, we're still at $240 a week. So this week we saw in the Senate, um, Senate President Fan dropped a bill that would increase the unemployment um, rate from $240 to $320. So substantial uh, increase of around $80. However, her bill uh, would eliminate, should I say, reduce the amount of time that you can be on unemployment. So you get $320, but you're only eligible for receiving unemployment for 20 weeks versus the 26 weeks that it currently is set at. In the House, they passed a bill um, 
sponsored by Representative Cook, which raised the unemployment rate from $240 to $300, but it made no change to the duration of time that you can claim unemployment. So it kept the standard at 26 weeks. This is, um, however, his bill, if passed and signed by the governor, would go in, would not go into effect until 2022. And on the Senate side, uh, President Fan's bill would go into effect immediately upon the general effective date, which is 90 days after the end of session, sine die, which is around August. So <clears throat> we've got these two competing bills. They both address the same topic, <clears throat> but there are some key factors in each of these bills that will have an impact on um, the state and any resident who receives unemployment as a result of not just the pandemic, but if they are laid off of work um, for whatever reason. So we're gonna continue monitoring this bill because we know that this can also have an impact on the livelihoods of the members that we serve um, in the deaf and the hard of hearing and deafblind community. So wanted to bring that bill to your attention. Um, the last thing, um, we have worked with some other disability uh, organizations and agencies on putting together a legislative action toolkit. So if you want to get more involved in the legislative process, check out our, out our website um, under our publication section. We will be posting the legislative action toolkit right there. Um, Pretty excited about the toolkit. Toolkit gives you uh, folks an, uh, an idea of how you can get engaged with your elected officials. We give you some tips on how to email your legislative members, how to find your legislative members to engage them on any legislation. Um, we also have some videos on how to create an art, a request to speak account and also uh, we have a video on how to uh, participate or watch a committee hearing uh, through the virtual session that is happening this year. So we're excited that we finalized that. We're gonna get this out. So if you have any questions, please continue to let us know. You can email us at info at a -C -D -H -H .az.gov. Um, so we'll be, we'll be talking in a couple of weeks and hopefully we'll have uh, more information about some of these bills that are going through the process. And, and in the meantime, give us a call or send us an email.